So the first, uh, the first bone we're going to start off with is the um, scapula. And so what I always uh, tell my students is, so whenever you're going about identifying bones and the different um, landmarks and everything, so obviously you want to first identify the bone, but you want to make sure you understand what it is that you're looking at. So whether you're looking at it from an anterior, so that's in the front, whether you're looking at the front of it or whether, uh, whether it's a posterior view, you also want to establish, okay, what part of the bone is medial versus what part is lateral or um, is this the proximal end of the bone or is it the distal end of the bone? Um, what you're looking at here, this is an anterior view of the scapula. And so this would be a uh, posterior view of the scapula. And so some of the, the first landmarks that I kind of want to um, go through. So this bone that's found here, this is the clavicle. So the clavicle, um, this is the sternal end which articulates with, uh, with the sternum. So this is the sternal end and then this is the acromial end of the clavicle. And <clears throat> so if this is the acromial end, what you have here looking at it from a lateral view, this is what's known as the acromion. So you have the acromion and then on the posterior side, this is the spine of the scapula. If you look at it from a lateral point of view, this is the glenoid fossa. It's an, uh, it's an impression where the head of the humerus will articulate here. And so when it articulates here, we form what's known as a, a ball and socket joint. So this is the glenoid fossa, and then um, this is what's known as the coracoid um, process. I'll also go over some of the borders. So I know this is anterior, so then this would be the medial border. This part on the outside would be the lateral border, and this would be the inferior angle of the scap, and then this would be the superior um, angle of the scapula. And so we also have a couple different fossas. So this is the um, subscapular fossa, which is anterior. Uh, you also have, um, so this is the supraspinous fossa because it's above the spine of the scap. And then at the very bottom, this is the infraspinous fossa um, here that's on the bottom. Looking at the, um, the glenoid, so you have the supraglenoid tubercle, and then you also have the infraglenoid uh, tubercle. So that's um, all the components for the scapula. And onward, we have the humerus. So what's the first thing I do? I orient myself. So what am I looking at? So this is the anterior side, and then obviously this would be the posterior side. And so I look at the head of the, the, head of the humerus, and so that's here. So this would be, for instance, a um, left humerus because that's what's going to articulate with the scapula. And then I also look here. So if this is the head, then that would make this the medial epicondyle because it's on the medial side. So medial epicondyle and then the lateral epicondyle uh, would be on that side. And so um, on the proximal end, you have the tubercles. And so tubercles are different from tuberosities because they're um, smaller projections that um, serve as attachment sites for muscles. Um, so um, whether it's a tubercle, it's smaller compared to a tuberosity. So um, this one, because it's uh, larger compared to this one, we call it the greater tubercle, and this one is the lesser tubercle. Uh, if you work our way down, um, this projection here that's somewhat um, lateral, this is known as the deltoid tuberosity because um, the muscle that's on the shoulder, it's known as the deltoid, and that's where it attaches here. Okay, so um, we still work our way down. So I've already pointed out this one, which was the uh, medial epicondyle. And then uh, if you look at it from here, uh, this part is what's known as the trochlea, and then this is the, uh, what's known as the capitulum. So you have the um, trochlea, and you can kind of like see the shape of it. And then um, this part, number 17, this is what's known as the coronoid fossa. And the reason that they call it the coronoid fossa is because this is what's gonna receive the, the ulna. So the coronoid process of the ulna is what's gonna articulate here. So let me show you um, what I mean. So the ulna, it direct, directly articulates here. And so whenever you do what's known as elbow flexion, so moving the elbow into this position, 
the ulna sits like this, and then so the coronoid process of the ulna is this part right here. And so as you as elbow flexion occurs, it goes up, and then you can see that the coronoid um, process is articulating with the um, with the coronoid fossa, which is found there. Okay, so then uh, I mentioned earlier that this is the capitulum, and then number 19, that's what's known as the um, radial fossa. And so they call that the radial fossa because <coughs> this bone right here, this is the radius. And so um, the part of the head of the radius, which is this part at the top, that's what's going to um, receive the the radius, the radial fossa is what um, receives that. And then, um, yeah, so that's it for this bone. Okay, so we did the uh, humerus. And then let's go back over, let's see if I can bring. So once again, this is the ulna, it articulates here. And the back part of it, this is the olecranon. So this is like, where your um, elbow is. And then uh, this part is known as the trochlear, uh, the trochlear notch. And so the trochlear notch, that's what articulates with the humerus, right? because it's articulating with the trochlea of it. So you have the um, trochlear notch. This, once again, that's the uh, coronoid um, process. So then if you look at um, this part, on the on the ulna, so this is the the radial fossa of the ulna, because if when the bone when it articulates with the radius here, that's the part that receives the the head of the the radius. It articulates with it right there. And then um, so this is the radius. So this is what's known as a radial tuberosity. So that's the radial uh, tuberosity. And then, so those are, this is the neck, and then I said this was the head of the radius. So then if you look at um, some of the, the distal uh, structures here of the ulna and the radius. So this is the styloid process of the ulna, and then this is the, the, head, of the, the head of the ulna. And so if you kind of look at it, they're kind of basically just inverted because this would be the distal end, this is the proximal end, but both of them have heads there, and then um, this part is where the neck is, but then that's what the, the styloid process is, but they're oriented in this manner. Okay, so then um, this part is the, so if this is the, if this is the radius, this is the ulnar notch of the radius, because that's what articulates with the head of the, the ulna, and then um, this is the um, styloid process of the radius, which is number uh, 31 on this side. Okay, so that's it for the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. So now let's work our way and look at some of the carpal bones. So the carpal bones, uh, what we're referring to is the wrist bones that are here. And um, so what you're looking at it, so once again, this is the radius, this is the, the ulna. And the two bones that are directly articulating um, here with the radius. So this one is what's known as scaphoid, the scaphoid. And then um, number 28, that's what's known as the lunate. And so the Latin words that they use, they're just like describing the shapes with something that they're already familiar with. So for instance, um, 27, this is um, a little like a little boat. So it's kind of shaped like a boat and then um, number 28, which is right here, which is the lunate, uh, it's Latin for half moon or moon. And so what I like to do to orient myself when I look at some of the wrist bones, so I know that this is the scaphoid, this is the lunate, and then I go, um, I make like this little triangle here. So the one that's right here in the middle, that's what's known as the, uh, the capitate. So you have the capitate, and then these two that are on the on the thumb side. So um, this one is the trapezoid, and this one is the trapezium, the one that's lateral. And so it can be easy to mix these two up because they both sound with T. They start with T's and they sound fairly similar. But the easy way to remember that is that 
the oids go together. So like this is the scaphoid and this is the trapezoid. So then that would make this the trapezium. So then if I work my way towards the pinky side, then I see this hook here. And so this is what's known as hamate, the hamate bone. And so hamate, um, it's Latin for the, like, the little hook. So if you see it from like that point of view, you can see it kind of looks like a hook. So you have um, this one, which is articulating. Um, so the, as far as like the digits are concerned, it's one, two, three, four, and five. Um, but that's the hamate. And then um, these two are the, the PT. So number 34, which is the one that's most lateral, this is what's known as the pisiform. And so it's Latin for P, uh, little p. So it's just kind of shaped like a P, you can see that. And then this last one is what's known as the um, triquetrum, which is 34 on the, on the back side. Okay, so that's it for the upper extremity. Now let's go to the um, lower extremity. And um, the first part that we want to start off with, so what it is that we're looking at, so this is a, um, this is a male pelvis. And um, in the previous, previous lecture, I've kind of like went over like all the different vertebrae and everything, um, but the sacrum is also, um, the sacrum is what's located here. And so uh, let's go over some of the, the bony anatomy of the sacrum. And so the wing, which is here on the outside, that's what's known as the, the ala. So you have the ala here. And then these little uh, foramen here, those are the sacral, um, the sacral foramen. And then here on the back side, so on the posterior side, this is what's the, the medial crest, or the uh, median, sorry, the median crest. And then these crests here on the sides, those are the the lateral crest and then um, that's this is where the coccyx is and then this is the sacral uh, foramina so the spinal cord um, travels all the way down and then um, we have a part what's known as the cauda equina and so the tail kind of just um, splits and passes through um, this foramina okay um, also you can see these are the articular the superior articular faucets of the sacrum that articulate with um, this part of the, of the lumbar vertebra, these little um, projections here. Okay, so that's it for the sacrum. So now let's, uh, what I have here, this is a single hip bone. Okay, so you have two of these hip bones together which form the pelvis um, and then the part where so let me point out this. So this is what's known as the auricular surface because that's what articulates with the sacrum. So when the sacrum and the ilium, they articulate together, we form what's known as the sacro, uh, sacroiliac joint. Uh, <clears throat> so now let's kind of, um, so let's orient ourselves first and what it is that we're looking at. So I know that this is an anterior view. I look at the obturator foramen and then this is like where the pubic, the pubic region is. And so <clears throat> before we get into the specific um, bony landmarks, let's look at um, what are the three main regions of the, of the hip, of the pelvis itself. So you have the ilium, which is uh, this part. So you have the ilium, which is here. And then what's below the ilium, so once you go past the, this bone, uh, bony landmark right here, you're now getting into where the pubis is. So the pubis is down here. And then um, once you get to about this part right here, this is what's known as the ischium. So the ischium is all the way um, back to this part. So ilium, pubic, pubis, and then the ischium is where my hand is here at the bottom. Okay, so now we know the, the basic parts of the pelvis, so now let's go and identify uh, the bony landmarks. So this narrow ridge of bone is known as a crest. It's a crest, not a line, because lines are less prominent uh, when you compare the two. And so because this is the front side of the pelvis, and this is a, a narrow projection, uh, a narrow projection, it's a spine. And so the name that they give it, it's also above this structure here. So they call it the anterior, it's in the front, superior, because it's at the top, the iliac, because that's the region where it's at, and then it's the spine. 
And so for short, we just say the ASIS. And then what's below it is the AIIS. So then if you look at a posterior view of it, so this is the PSIS, and then this is the PIIS. Okay. So we're good there. And then if you look here on the inside of it, this is the iliac fossa. So there's the belly of a muscle known as the iliacus is what sits right here. Okay, so now let's go um, past the ilium and get to the, the pubic region. So um, this arm-like bar of bone, the term that we use to describe that is what's known as a, a ramus or a ramus. And so you have this ramus here and then the other um, ramus here. And so they call this one the superior pubic ramus because it's pertaining to the pubic region. And then this is the inferior pubic ramus. On this project, this pointed projection right here, this is what's known as the pubic tubercle, not the pubic tuberosity. And then this is the pubic ramus, which is um, number um, 14. So then now that we're here in the ischium, Number 10, this is what's known as the ischial ramus. So you have the ischial ramus, and then um, this um, projection here, where so the hamstrings attach here, um, this part of the bone is where you're sitting on, and this is known as the ischial tuberosity. So remember, it's the ischial tuberosity, not the ischial tubercle, because it's large. And then if we look here on the inside, uh, this is the, what's known as the acetabulum, where the head of the femur will articulate with. And so now if we look at it from a posterior point of view, so this is what's known as the sciatic notch because the sciatic nerve is what um, passes through here. So you have the sciatic notch and then we're still at the ischium, so then this is what's known as the ischial spine. Okay, so that's it for the hip. Or, yeah, for the hip. So now let's move on to our to the femur. Okay, so what's the first thing we do whenever we look at a bone? We orient ourselves. And so what am I looking at? Okay, I know that this is the medial side because this is where the head is. So then if this is the head of the femur, which bone would this be? This is what would be the left one. So head and then, um, so I know that this is the medial side. So then now let's go through uh, from top to bottom, starting proximal and work our way distal. Okay, so you have the head, you have the neck, which is this part. And then if you look at, um, let's see. So this part, let's do the trochanters first. Yeah, I like it, that's fine. So you have this part, which is the greater trochanter because it's bigger. And then this part here, this is the lesser trochanter. So you have the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, and then you have um, two different, you have a line and a crest. So a crest, once again, that's more prominent, and because it's in between the trochanters, you have the inner trochanteric line, which is this one in the front, and then the inner trochanteric crest, which is here on the, on the back side. So then uh, once, you get, <clears throat> once you get below that, this um, bony landmark here, which is marked as number 20, this is where the part that's known as the gluteal tuberosity because the glutes are um, what attach there. But I'm going to move this a little bit up actually because this looks a little bit better. Yeah, so you can actually see the more of the projection here on this side. That's where the, the gluteal um, tuberosity would be. Okay, so then um, number 32, working your way down, this is what's known as the linea aspera. So that's there. And then let's look at it um, from an anterior view once again. So these two parts, they're condyles, right? Because they're articular surfaces. And so I know that this is the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle. What's above condyles are epicondyles. So that's this part over here. So you have the epicondyle, medial epicondyle, and then this is where the lateral um, epicondyle would be. Um, number 27 here, this is the patellar surface. This is where the patella um, articulates there. So then um, if we look at it 
from a posterior view, this is the inner condylar fossa, right? It's a narrow depress it's a depression of bone here. And um, so I've already said that these are the condyles. So then what's above them are these lines. So these lines, because they're above the condyles, it's the supracondylar lines here. So both of those. And then um, the one of the last ones, so number 24, which is here on the side. So this is what's known as the adductor tubercle because muscles that bring the leg towards midline, they adduct the leg. Um, that's where they attach here at the adductor uh, tubercle. And the last one, uh, this was the fovea capitis, if I didn't mention that already. Okay, so that's it for the femur. So we can also look at the patella here, and this will kind of show like where it articulates the patellar surface of it. Um, so this part is known as the uh, apex of the patella, and then uh, you have the medial faucet, uh, which is here, and then also the, the lateral faucet uh, for the patella, which is on this side. This would be medial, yeah, and this would be lateral. Okay, so now let's move on to the tibia and the fibula. So this here is the tibia, and let me already show the, the fibula. So this is the fibula, and if I look at it, I know that this is a right bone because this here, this is what the medial malleolus is. So you have the medial malleolus that's on the tibia and then the lateral malleolus, which is uh, here, on, here on the fibula. Okay, so let's look at some of the parts of, parts of the tibia. So th the, this top part, these are known as the intercondylar because it's in between the condyles, the intercondylar eminence. And then um, number um, 26, this is uh, what's known as the tibial um, tuberosity. And then um, both of these, these are just the, the epicondyles here. Okay, so then now I already mentioned the, the medial malleolus, and then um, this part, this is the, the surface for, the articular surface for what's known as the um, talus. So I'm gonna point the talus out uh, once we get to the, the leg, the leg part. Okay, so this is the, the head of the fibula, which is at the top, and then this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. Those are the only two. Not many um, bony anatomy on the fibula. Okay, so now we are on the ankle bones. <clears throat> so let's look at some of them on here. So this part, um, this is what's articulating with the, with the tibia. So this entire bone is what's known as the, so you have the talus. So you have the talus, and then if you look at it laterally, this is the calcaneus. And then this bone that's here in the front that navigates, it's called, um, so this is the navicular. And then what's lateral, you have this is the cuboid, and then one, two, and three, all of these are the cuneiforms. So medial, intermediate, and then the lateral cuneiform. And then if you look at the foot, so these are the, the metatarsals here. So this is foot um, digit one, two, three, four, and five. So these are the metatarsals, and then um, these are the phalanges. Um, working so for the phalanges you have proximal middle and then the distal ones Okay, so um, It's the same thing here with the hand As far as like the digits so one two three four and five um, These would be the metacarpals and then these would be the phalanges proximal um, middle and distal All right, so that'll be it for um, this lecture on the appendicular um, skeleton.